Share with your students insights from Kevin Coyne, air traffic controller at Richmond International Airport, about the career of air traffic control. Hello, welcome to today's segment where we will talk a bit about air traffic control. I'm Bonnie Murray, your education specialist, and we have with us Kevin Coyne. Kevin is an air traffic controller at the uh, Richmond International Airport in Richmond, Virginia, and we're very happy to have you with us. Kevin, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, so we're excited you're here. So how did you become interested in air traffic control? Can you trace back to, to things in your youth where uh, you can see links to where you are now? Uh, I've always been interested in aviation, um, uh, where aircraft are going, how they're getting there, the, uh, the efficiency of the system, and one of the things I like about the job is that it's different. Every single day is different. One day will be a nice, beautiful day with weather, another day there will be delays. Aircraft have um, sometimes maintenance issues or the inability to travel someplace or weather will shut down a way that they can go. or the airport that they're going to might not um, be able to accept aircraft due to weather and that allows a challenge. It gives me something different to do and something to uh, look forward to every single day. It's not the same thing day in and day out. So I've always had, I've, I've always kind of been bored with uh, the same thing every day. So to be afforded the opportunity to change it up and having mm -hmm. to solve problems and figure it out is right. a real refreshing thing to do. Yeah. So there are a lot of different variables that can come into play, and from day to day, those are always changing, and from hour to hour, I guess, in some circumstances, they're changing. Hour, so. hour to hour and day to day, there are plenty of challenges and changes yeah. that occur in the system that make, right. it, uh, that make it fun and exciting to do mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah, and I guess you leave with a great sense of accomplishment yep. at the end of each day Everybody as well. Everybody gets yeah. to where they want to go. It's a, it's a good day. <laughs> right, that's a good part of it, too. Okay. So what did you actually have to do to become an air traffic controller? Uh, I went to school to uh, what they call a CTI school, which is the uh, College Training Initiative. Mm -hmm. It's a joint program that the FAA has, uh, the Federal Aviation Administration has allowed school, certain colleges to be able to provide air traffic classes mm -hmm. that give students the abilities and the knowledge in order, uh, in order for them to be able to do their job and to be well trained so when the, F when the Federal Aviation Administration does hire them, they will be able to go to the training academy that the FAA has in Oklahoma City and learn the skills that they need and the rules and regulations of the job so when they go to the f their specific facility in their mm -hmm. geographic part of the country, they will know what they need to do in order to perform their job. They'll have all that background knowledge, right? They'll have all the background knowledge, and then mm -hmm. when they get to the airport, they will be able to learn the specifics of that airport that they work at or the radar facility that they work at. Okay. So there are kind of two entry points into air traffic control. You can go the college route and go to a college. I know Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University is one college that offers courses like that. So, yes. you know, you can take the college courses and go through and graduate with a degree. And then you still need to work with the FAA to become certified as a controller. Yes. And then another option is to work directly with the FAA. There are some people that start and go in through that route as well, correct? There are some people that just that apply to the FAA and get hired by the FAA mm -hmm. into their job. Uh, sometimes the controllers come from the military mm -hmm. side. Okay. The military does have controllers that they train and they are taught in the military specifically to their, um, to their service. And then they come out and they have a... Uh, some of the skill sets already needed to do the job with on the civilian side with the Federal Aviation Administration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And all of that then involves uh, prior to working directly with the FAA. Once you are certified, you take a test, you become certified as a controller, then you're assigned to an airport and that's where you really learn what you're going to have to do once you're at that airport, correct? Yeah. When you're at the yeah. airport, you're going to learn the specifics of that airport and everything mm -hmm. that needs to be uh, that is tailored to working in that environment that's specific to that area. Right, okay, because there is, there is some variability between airports as far as what the job will actually be. Yes. Interesting, another variable that yes. you, can, you can keep up with, yeah, okay. So when you are at work in the tower in Richmond, what is it that you're actually doing? Well, we sit up in that tower and we move aircraft around the airport environment. Uh, we taxi aircraft from the terminal building where you board to the runway and then once they land, we taxi aircraft from the, when they turn off the runway and clear the runway 
back to the terminal building. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then are there other, tell us about some of the other jobs that are happening around you. Uh, there are different jobs that go on in the tower. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ground control, which takes airplanes from the terminal where you board the plane okay. and take them from there to the runway. And when aircraft land and turn off the runway, ground control also taxes them on the ground back to the terminal where you deplane. Mm -hmm. The other position is called local control, and they're responsible for aircraft on the runway. They clear aircraft for takeoff when aircraft are inbound to the airport. Once they get close enough, usually within five to ten miles, um, they are switched over by the radar controller who has sequenced the aircraft to the airport. Mm -hmm. And the local controller will clear them to land. And after an aircraft has landed and exited the runway, usually the next aircraft is ready to go. And you can clear the next aircraft off of the runway to depart. Once the aircraft gets a couple hundred feet off the runway, then you would uh, tell the aircraft to switch to the next controller, which mm -hmm. would be the radar controller, mm -hmm. and they take the aircraft and sequence him out of the airport environment and up to the higher altitudes where he can get on course to his destination. And move on, right. And we are going to go into that in a little greater detail when we talk about the uh, simulation game where you can actually be an air traffic controller. Yes. So, yeah. Um, so there is a variety of different jobs within ATC, and each person has a specific role to play, and those pieces all fit together. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's the tower environment that I work in, and then mm -hmm. there are radar facilities that take aircraft from, rad from, uh, from the airport environment and move them uh, through the country and up into the altitude that they need to be to, mm -hmm. to get to the, uh, their destination. Okay, very interesting, really neat. So thinking about your job, what is it that you like best about your job? Uh, the best thing I like about my job is the, the different environment and the different situations that arise each and every day. No two days are the same. Uh, as I said before, you have weather, you have um, all different pilots, all different skill levels, mm -hmm. and it involves a very unique set of skills to be able to balance everything that you need to do to get aircraft to the destination that they need to get to in a safe an efficient mm -hmm. matter. Right, right. So the challenge of it, it sounds like, is one of the things that you it's, like. It's a challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's a good thing. Yeah, you can really, as I said, feel good at the end of the day then. So what advice would you give if there's someone who's somewhat interested in the field of air traffic control? What advice would you give to them? If someone was interested in air traffic control, I think it's a, a, a great field to get into. Um, it's unique, it's dynamic, it's, it's always changing, and uh, it's growing with technology. Mm -hmm. And it's an exciting field that challenges you every single day, that uh, makes you feel um, like you've accomplished something at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and you've helped a lot of people get to where they want to go, and you've made it a safe system. Right. Very good, yeah. That sounds like a really exciting job. Well, thank you, Kevin. We're going to uh, talk a little more about how you can play the role of air traffic controller, how you can get a little practice uh, at, with a simulation game. So stick with us, and we'll get to that simulation game shortly.